Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu wa alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdi allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna sayyidina muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه السبيل صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى We glorify Allah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessed days. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to witness this sacred month, the month of Dhul Hijjah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his bounties and his favors upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed blessed us. He has given us the opportunity to witness what is considered the best days of the year. He has given us the opportunity to be present during, it is the beginning of Dhul Hijjah, but to be present in this month of Dhul Hijjah where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, reminded us that there is no time in which deeds are more beloved, good deeds are more beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than these 10 days, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes oath by these 10 days. Allah does not take oath by anything unless there is some significant significance and there is tremendous importance to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ Allah says by dawn and by the ten nights, ten the scholars, they say it is referring to these ten days of Dhul Hijjah. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is a time that is, it happens to be a sacred time. It is a time when we are encouraged to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to use this opportunity to renew our devotions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there are special days, there are special nights, there are special moments. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to witness those special moments, those special nights, those special days, we need to make use of it because 
we, we don't know if we will have the opportunity again. You know, people, they make intentions, you know, throughout their lives to be given the opportunity to perform Hajj. And, and there are those who are given this opportunity and when they reach there, Allah takes their life and they are not able to perform the Hajj. Allah knows best and Allah rewards us for our good intentions. So that is why it is recommended that we all have that intention to perform Hajj. And even if we are unable to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy will grant us the rewards of our word through our honest, our sincere intentions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about the sacred time that we are in. These sacred months. He says in the Quran, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah ithna ashara shahra fi kitab Allah yawma khalaqa samawati wal ard minha arba'atun hurum thalika ad-din al-qayyim fala tazlimu fihinna anfusakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verily the number of months with him with Allah is 12 and it is written since the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth and we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything in the lawhul mahfuz the preserved tablet and so it's written there that this is Allah has written this that the number of months with him is 12 and more importantly he says arba'atun hurum they are four that are sacred we have just finished one of the sacred months, the month of Dhul Qa'ada. And we have just entered the month of Dhul Hijjah. This is another sacred month. And after that comes the month of Muharram, and that's another sacred month. And then the month of Rajab. And what do we do in this time? We, we keep away, it, it is incumbent upon us as Muslims that throughout our lives we strive, we strive to enjoy right and to forbid evil. But, but in these times, we exhort ourselves more to ensure that we are far away from the influences of shaitan and that we are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, This is the upright, or this is the right way, this is the right religion. So do not wrong yourselves in these months, these sacred months. Look to make sure that you, you know what Allah wants from you in terms of goodness and you strive to put it into practice and goodness my dear brothers and my dear sisters is not only in the praying of the salah or some of our rituals that we perform but during this time you want to make sure that you you fulfill the, the obligations that you have to Allah and to His creation. But Allah has rights and people have rights. Don't take it, don't take it away from them. And that's what is expected of us. 
throughout our lives, but more so during these sacred times, we want to make sure that we, we are more focused on getting closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah reminds us that this, this is the, the, in this sacred month of Dhul Hijjah, it is the time of Hajj. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَعَ إِلَيْهِ السَّبِيلَ And your Lord has commanded for those who can afford that they make the pilgrimage to His house. And so there are millions who are making their way. Some thousands and thousands are already there. They are making their way to the holy places, Mecca, Medina, in preparation for the Hajj. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept, grant them Hajj makbul, that Allah hajj, grant them an acceptable Hajj. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take them safely, bring them back safely. And whatever dua that they will be making on behalf of themselves, on behalf of us and this ummah, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept such dua. We, we pray also that Allah gives each and every one of us the opportunity to perform this important pillar of Islam, the Hajj, that was uh, performed by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to, to, to witness, not only to talk about the legacy of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to witness this legacy in real life in terms of being in the places where Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam, they, they, they established the, the, the foundation of the Kaaba, they established the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to be witnesses, to be in such places where they were, they were there ready to sacrifice for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his son in obedience to the, and submission to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and so we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant everyone that opportunity to be able to perform this beautiful pillar of Islam. A, a, a pillar that uh, includes all different acts of ibadah. You, you know, there, there is ibadah badaniya, and there is ibadah maliya. There is ibadah of the uh, of the, the body, the physical ibadah, and there is ibadah of our wealth, worship worshiping Allah through our bodies and worshiping Allah through our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that opportunity and the hajj, it's combined where we take our wealth and, and, and we use it to, to perform with our physical selves the, the, the hajj, this important pillar of Islam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this time it is, like I said earlier, it is time that is very precious. You know, not, not long ago, you witnessed the last 10 nights of Ramadan. You witnessed a, a, a night that is better than 1,000 months. Not long ago, you were given the opportunity to be witnesses engaged in ibadah, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best 10 nights of the year. In, in them, 
or within them is one night that is better than a thousand months. You know, sometimes people become occupied. Sometimes people uh, are, are taken up with so many material things. And, and you had aspirations. And you had so much that you wanted to do in the month of Ramadan, but you weren't able to do it. Don't despair. You know, Allah tells us in the Quran, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Never despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives you opportunities all the time. And so if you were not able to do the things that you wanted to do in the month of Ramadan in terms of good deeds, in terms of righteous deeds, pious deeds, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the opportunity again in the month of Dhul Hijjah, the first 10 days for us to do things that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that uh, in these 10 days of the Hijjah, because there are days in which righteous, pious deeds are more beloved to Allah than deeds performed any other time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Akfiru, increase your uh, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. And if you can't do it all the time, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, at least when you are finished with your salah, sit and say subhanallah 33 times. Say alhamdulillah 33 times. Say Allahu Akbar 33 times. If, if you were not doing it all the time, in every salah that you, fart salah that you finish, at least during these 10 days, be engaged in more remembrance and dhikr in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be engaged in more, subhanallah, that glory be to Allah, alhamdulillah, all praises are for Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And remember that there is none to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah, continuously say it. This was a, a, a sunnah that uh, it was felt that it was neglected. And so in previous times it is said that Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with both of them, father and son. Uh, and Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him also. They used to go out into the marketplace and say the takbir aloud during these, their authentic sunnah, during these 10 days, so that people would be reminded to say the takbir continuously during these 10 blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, increase your dhikr. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. In these blessed days, you, you want to make sure that you are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that you are repenting. We all make mistakes. Kullu bani Adam khatta wa khayral khatta'in atawwabun. Every son of Adam makes mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek forgiveness for their mistakes. This is, this is the season of worship. This is the season of hajj. 
the season of sacrifice. This is the season when it gets closer to the, 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 the Hajj period. It's all about people looking for forgiveness, looking to purify themselves. On the day of Arafah, people will be crying their hearts out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cleanse them and to return them as newborn babe. It is said by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when one performs the Hajj and he does not mix it with any sort of obscenity, any wrongdoing, he returns the day as if as the day he was given birth by his mother. And we all know that we were born without sin. And so that person comes back sinless without sin. And so we all want that for ourselves. We want to be purified. It is said, it's so important that the day on the day of Arafah, it is said that there is no day in which. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees slaves from the fire of hell than on the day of Arafah. So many people will be freed from the fire of hell. Because of what? People, they, they, they glorify Allah. They turn to Allah and they seek forgiveness and they do it sincerely. You know, it, it is not, it, it's not easy to perform Hajj today with all the, the restrictions and, and it's, it's, it costs a tremendous amount of money for people to go to perform the Hajj. So when people spend thousands and thousands of dollars and they go there for the Hajj, they go in there with all sincerity. So on the day of Arafah, when they cry their hearts out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is ikhlas in that crying. There is ikhlas in what they're doing. And, and that's why the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that uh, so many people, there is no day in which, uh, you know, that, that it is equivalent to the day of Arafah in terms of people being freed from the fire of hell. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is the time of fasting. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he recommended fasting in these days of Dhul Hijjah, especially on the day of Arafah. And when he was asked about his significance, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, it, it, it expiates for sins that were committed in the preceding year and sins that will be committed in the following year. Two years expiation of sins or wrongdoing things that we would do that is not in accordance with the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, we should all be, if you can't fast these beginning days of Dhul Hijjah, at least make intention to fast on the day of Arafah because there, is, there are tremendous rewards in the fasting on the day of Arafah. In like you were being told earlier that the day of Arafah would be on, on Saturday, the, the 15th. So make intention to do this fasting with your families and spending the time asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness, for his mercy, for his rahmah. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to relieve the sufferings and the pains of our brothers and sisters in all parts of the world, especially those in, in Gaza, in Palestine. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, you want to spend these days in, in making sure that you are engaged in some sadaqat, giving of charity. You know, when you think about these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, think about doing something that will benefit someone. If not a large community, if not an entire village, at least someone. Benefit someone. Bring something good to someone during this, these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. 
Is remember again, there is no time in which good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than this time. So be kind to your mothers and fathers. Make sure that you fulfill your responsibilities to your sons and daughters. Reach out to your neighbors. Help your brothers and sisters wherever they may be. Allahu fi awnil abd ma kan al abdu fi awni akhihim. Allah will come to your aid so long as you come to the aid of your brothers and sisters. And so many in the world need our assistance. Whether they're in Gaza, whether they're in Turkey, in, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in India, in different parts of the world, in Sudan, in Yemen, there are so many who are suffering. And they need the help of their brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is the time of Qur'an. You want to make sure that you are engaged with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So often we strive in the month of Ramadan to recite the whole Qur'an. And sometimes we are unable to do it. Every letter that you recite, there are ten rewards. Ten blessings. And imagine during this time, the letters that you recite and the rewards that you will get. Deeds are more, good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than in any other time. When you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, during the month of Ramadan, so many you are engaged in the praying of tahajjud, standing at night, and pouring their hearts out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use these times also to pour your hearts out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your brothers and sisters, they need your dua. They need your supplication. They need for you to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them relief to bring sustenance to them. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this time is the time of worship, the time of hajj, the time of sacrifice. There are many people in the world who do not enjoy meat as one of their, their regular food. And they look forward to this time of the year when people will make sacrifice on the day of Eid and the two days following the day of Eid. And it has become so simple Yes, the best way is for you to do it yourselves. But if you can't, there are so many of our brothers and sisters who are heads of different organizations, charitable organizations, who have made arrangements in different parts of the world so that they can take your money and make sacrifices on behalf of you and help the poor and needy in different parts of the world. Remember the saying of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, if someone is, uh, he can afford to do the sacrifice and he does not do it, then let him not come to our Eid grounds. Let him not join us in prayers. And when it was going to cost you hundreds of dollars, these organizations, they have made it affordable 
that it may only cost you 30, 40, 50 dollars to do a sacrifice. And so many people can afford that today. And so I encourage the young ones, especially the young ones, that if you are working and you are able to do it, hook up with one of these organizations and let them do the sacrifice on your behalf so that you, in these times, you, you feel that you are living the legacy of our forefathers, that you are living the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, that you are commemorating that great event, the greatest sacrifice in the history of mankind, where a father was called upon by his creator to sacrifice his son to show his obedience and his commitment to his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, these times are precious times. And again, I say that do as much good as you can so that you may reap the rewards from these special times, these special days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to benefit from these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'iru al-mu'min al-minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, you are Abdul Alameen, was Salatu was Salam, while I say Dina Muhammad, while I Ali, he was Habihi, Ajmain, with one of Lahi, Allah, him, Ilayo Middin. Amma Bad, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, this time is a time too that we need to make sure that. We remember our loved ones and we connect with them. That we maintain family ties, family relationship. You know, so often we go through our lives and we forget about our close relatives. We distance ourselves from them because sometimes we become so occupied. Re remember that when you maintain relationship with your families, your blood ties, Allah maintains relationship with you. When you cut off that relationship, Allah cuts off relationship with you. And so if throughout the year you didn't find time to call your brother, to call your sister, or to engage with your mother and father and spend some quality time with them, or to do something with your grandparents or your great-grandparents, with your uncles and your aunts, your nieces and your nephews, your sons and your daughters, Use these times, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to show some love, to express some compassion, some care, concern for others, especially those who have some blood relationship to you. And so there are so many things that can be done so that we get the greatest of rewards. Because again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, there is no time in which good deeds done are better than the deeds done in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. 
And as you leave here today, remember that. Remember that you always need to engage in good deeds. And there is no better time than this time because the rewards are tremendous with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our ibadat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of the hellfire. Allahumma aiza islama wal muslimin. Allahumma nawwit kulubana bi nur al-eeman. Wa thabbit kulubana ala deen al-islam. Wa la taj'al fi kulubina gilla lilladhina amanu rabbana inna karufur rahim. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فذكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم السلام